So Blender offers a text um, option as well. So we can go add and down to text, click on text. And you can see it just gets put onto the 3D work surface. Um, now to, that's the default. Uh, to edit this, we go into edit mode. Obviously tab would have got there as well. Um, backspace would delete what text was there and we can put in some text. So I put in top. Um, now I've been editing that back into object mode. There I can se select it. But now we want to turn this into a 3D object. If I go back tab into edit mode, I can only type onto it. So um, in object mode, we want to turn this into a mesh object, not into a typing text object. So object mode, object, and we want to convert to mesh because mesh modeling is what we're doing. Now when I go tab into edit mode, you can see it has put dots, lines and surfaces onto all of it. Okay, so uh, we can select all of that with an A and extrude and uh, it's by default it extrudes up into the Z direction. Um, and we could print that, you know, so obviously in object mode, go back and, and export or save it and export it as a, um, an SDL file. Uh, but if you were to print it, obviously those spaces, these um, pieces aren't joined together and you would end up with three separate objects. That could be quite nice, you know, obviously it becomes a, um, a sculpture form you can play with and moves things around. Um, but uh, you know, for example, I'm now wanting actually to stick all these together to make one object. So I'll use the Boolean modifier, okay, and that's over there. Um, the only thing is, though, that uh, if I go back to object mode, I can't sort of, you know, the Boolean has to be done in object mode. I can't grab the O and then move it over um, to touch the T because it's all the same object. You know, if I go into edit, I could select this and move it there, but then I wouldn't be able to do a, a, a Boolean. So what I actually need to, to do, I need to do is to separate them out so that they are three separate objects then I can deal with them as individual objects. So the way to do this is there is a separation um, option is I want to select or I must select just what I want to separate. Um, so it's all of the, uh, the, um, the O here that I want to do. So I'm going to go into wireframe and a box select. So the box selecting is going through everything. Make sure that I'm only getting the, um, the O and then uh, the key shortcut is P for separate and select uh, select the selection separate. Okay, it goes on a weird color because that is now separate from the editing that we're doing we're in edit mode. We no longer can edit this one because it's a new object, but I want to do the same over here with the P. So box select all of that. It is all selected, right? Yeah, P for separate selection. Okay, um, so you know I could edit this guy, but we'll leave it as is. So tab to go back into object mode, Z to go back to solid form, um, and now you can see each one of these is a separate object, and there they're all up, up there. Um, the O and the P. So I, I can now select um, the uh, the O. And uh, I want to sort of move it over to touch or join onto the T. So let's move the, the, move, the move tool that are. The gizmo for it now is kind of over there where it's nice for it to be in the middle of the object. So what's happened here is that originally with the text, the gizmo was off in a sort of in the center of the work area for everything. Uh, and now it's still there for each individual one, but let's kind of get this to move over into the middle of here. So it's the object we're dealing with. 
and uh, it's the origin that we want to move. So object set origin, and then it's got an op option of by surface or volume. It really doesn't. You, you'll find there are slightly different places as to where it moves to, but we'll just go with the volume. All right. So now the um, the origin has moved to the center of that, and that gives me a chance to now move that across so that the O overlaps with the T. So you know we'll stick them together to become one object. And I want to add the P to that as well. A similar problem with the origin here. So object set origin down to center of mass and it's jumped across and now I can move that over to there. Okay. Right, so now I want to boolean stick all these together. So T is going to be my parent, just happens to be at the top. And uh, where's my modifier? Oh, it's the spanner modifier boolean. I want a union and text number one is the O. I can see it's oranged up like I expected to, so I can apply that. Uh, so that's now the main body. Bit of funniness going over there because the um, the O is still underneath. But anyway, let's go to the main parent. That's the text boolean union. Uh, text number two is the P. That's looking good. We apply that and I apply. Um, now we can just you know kind of put these out of sight. But you know if we choose the P, you can see it's only a copy. So the P and the O could be used for something about uh, something else. Bear out, put them out of sight. Um, so now we have one object and one solid object. And if we're going to wireframe, a uh, bit difficult to see, but you know sort of it is all stuck together. That they they're not just overlapping; they are one. Back into solid. Having done that, you can see there's something a little bit odd going on here with the surfaces. There's some gaps. You know, and that's something to do with the bullions and gaps down the bottom here as well. Um, the, uh, we can fix that, but also I actually think that if you were to export this as an STL file um, and try and print it, it the, um, the slicing software would handle it. And the slicing software is only looking at the vertical walls. It doesn't sense the horizontal surfaces, so it wouldn't you know, be picking up on what's missing there and what's missing there. Um, but just in case it uh, threw up some problems, we could fix that um, by going into edit mode, select everything, and then F for fill, the key F, um, and uh, there it has filled the gaps, top and bottom. Okay. Um, but now actually I want to kind of mess around with the top here a little bit. I think I'll keep the bottom. Um, so I want to sort of get inside or, or separate this out so I can you know, manipulate it and clean it up a bit. Um, and uh, But there's a lot of extra lines here. I think Alt, yeah, you see, if I kind of try and Alt select all the way around, Alt left select, it doesn't go, you know, all the way around the perimeter. It just does a little bit and, and so on and so forth. Anyway, the way uh, to sort this out is to select just the top. So I'm back into wireframe so that I can do a box select of just the very top, okay, and then I'm going to extrude that up again a little bit, and you can see that the surface has been put on this one, but the extrusion is doesn't have the surface on it. It's kind of a, just an internal space there. So now, if I X delete the top ones, and I go back to solid view, so that was my Z. There we are. I've now I kind of cut away the top surface. Um, and now if I alt left click, you can see it has selected the whole of the perimeter around there. And so we could scale that, not in the Z direction, and kind of scale it out a little bit. So you've almost got this vessel that is also a bit of topography at the same time. Go back to object mode. Um, so this is, um, you know, kind of using the text as an object. I think it's you know, kind of a real interesting object. Was, uh, option, sorry. Uh, it obviously, uh, the text starts offering you kind of uh, extra content or context to it. 
Um, I've only shown you, you know, the basics here. If you go onto YouTube, um, I'm sure, you know, and, and do a search under Blender and text, um, you will find uh, that you can put text onto surfaces. You can bend text to go around a cylinder. Um, you know, so you could get quite involved in text.